Greetings from the European Parliament studio in Strasbourg. My name is Ilza Nagla and today we will be talking about gender equality. And I'm joined by Alice Kunke, she's from Sweden, and here in the European Parliament comes from the group of the Greens. And uh, also I'm joined by Mark Angel from Luxembourg, and here he comes from the Progressive Alliance of Socialists and Democrats. Very good to have you both here. Uh, but correct me if I'm wrong, but I have a feeling that in the last 10, 20 years, nothing much has happened in the terms of uh, gender equality. It has not improved, or at least it's an improving at the turtle speed. Is that true? Well, I would say no. Things have happened. Uh, I mean, there are progress, but it's not going fast enough. And we have also backlashes. So it's both good and bad things that have happened during the last uh, 5, 10, 15 years. But we can see progress also, but not, uh, as you said, not fast enough. What backlashes have we experienced in the last years? I mean, the backlashes are obvious, the ones that we all are aware of. For example, when it comes to the abortion rights. Uh, and we can also see that the narrative, and there are strong movements in Europe, uh, where that are very um, uh, conservative and nationalistic and also uh, gender and LGBTQI uh, uh, negative. So this is backlashes when it comes to equality and gender equality. Do you think that the uh, pandemic time has pushed back on gender equality that uh, women have been affected more? I mean, uh, it put a spotlight on inequalities which are existing. It put a spotlight on the gender pay gap, especially uh, those women who brought us to the crisis, who worked in supermarkets, who worked in the hospitals, in the care sector. These are, 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 are jobs where uh, uh, the work is underpaid, so that's one inequality, for example. And um, also, we know that during COVID, the um, uh, violence, sexual violence at home, domestic violence, the numbers went up uh, dramatically. So this this is, this is quite worrying, and uh, and and these inequalities we, we we see them now even clearer as they as we mm. saw them before, and therefore we have to react. We have to react, and we owe it to women. We owe it to the women because, once again, it was. Uh, a lot of women who took part in when, when, when we were in confinement, who was working in the supermarkets, who was uh, uh, taking care that we, we, were, we had food. It was m mostly women. It was, of course, also men, but, also nurses but women, in the nurses yeah. in the hospitals, the care work, uh, etc. So um, there is inequalities and we have to really continue. And what Ali said is uh, the backlash is it's especially this anti gender movement, which, which is getting more and more well organized internationally. They're working on a family treaty. They want to mm. put patriarchy back they they, are, they 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 want to put women back in the role uh, a, a, as it was seen by society 100 years ago and we cannot allow that we have to fight back and um, and, and I think uh, what you are saying are, are really I mean we have two main challenges we have the the, the pandemic who yeah. is, is still here and who which the consequences uh, are severe when it comes to uh, gender equality but then we also have the, the right-wing movement and yeah. the anti-gender movement. So these two factors are very strong and combined, they can, I mean, it can be a catastrophe if we are not fighting them uh, mm -hmm. with force. So we can go back to Middle Ages almost, uh, if, if we allow that to happen. I mean, we, we can, I mean, we won't, I mean, this is not Star Wars, so we won't <laughs> go back to the Middle Ages. But uh, in, in mindset and when it comes to the, the the circumstances in on what uh, where we build our society. Yes, there are uh, big risks going on. But EU is trying to do something about it. Uh, the mm -hmm. new EU gender equality strategy, right? That's especially aimed to 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 help with the situation. And what exactly it's going to be about? Well, it's it's a big plan, and uh, finally <laughs> it's here. And the Commission uh, and the, not at least Ursula von der Leyen have been very clear from the beginning that this is something that they will put forward. And not at least when it comes to fighting gender-based violence, this is uh, this is a tool that uh, will make it. Um, uh, uh, I mean, when it comes to the Istanbul Convention, that is a, 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 of course a, a big factor when it comes to fight gender-based violence. Now the member states need to implement it and, 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 and sign it and, and start working in accordance with it. So 
when fighting gender-based violence, I think this uh, gender action plan really can, can be a, a big help, a big tool to make a change. It is, I think it's very good that the, the, this commission now has a special commissioner for equality. It's Helena Dali from Malta, and she came out with the gender equality strategy, but she followed up with the LGBTI equality strategy. She followed up with a disability, a new disability strategy. So all these discriminations that exist, uh, she looks at it, and the commission, and we in the parliament look at it, also from the intersection point of view, the intersectionality. So we have to fight these different uh, discriminations because we want to achieve a union of equality. And the gender equality strategy has, um, gives a lot of recommendations to member states, but, and where it can legislate itself, it will propose uh, uh, legislation. For example, uh, we will have a legislation against uh, gender-based violence, a European legislation, because we put it on the list of Euro crimes. I think that is very important. And then we will have uh, the, we're working right now on the um, uh, uh, pay transparency directive, because you know there is still average-wise 16% of pay gap between what men and women earn for the same work of same value. So there we will have a directive and we need to legislate because we came up with, with recommendations. It's even in the treaty from 1957, it says that women and men should earn the same uh, money for the same job or for, for work of equal value. So it's nothing, so the colleagues uh, from the, I shouldn't even call them colleagues, the members <laughs> from the right, far right, they tell us this is again from the gender ideology. No, it's in the treaty from 1957. Then the commission came out with recommendations in, in 2012. Some countries followed these recommendations and there we see a clear uh, uh, that the gender pay gap is closing slowly, but mm. a lot of countries didn't follow. So now we need legislation, otherwise it doesn't move. And it's like uh, Alice said, uh, it goes too slow, uh, gender equality mm. often, it goes too slow and... Uh, uh, but, you know, but hopefully this, this strategy, this plan now, this, uh, I mean, it's like a road map. We yeah. put pressure on yeah. the member states to really make this change. I mean, I'm so happy that this is really finally happening because uh, we've been fighting so long, mm -hmm. the progressive uh, parliamentarians have been fighting so long for this to, to be a reality and now it's, it's soon here. And but we there have is good, sorry. opposition also in the parliament, right, uh, regarding those, those uh, yes. issues. But does that somehow affect it that now in this parliament the percentage of women MEPs has increased as opposed to the previous one? We have now 41% of female mm -hmm. uh, MEPs in the parliament. Does that help? That helps, but we also need men who are yes. uh, allies, feminists, and, uh, and, uh, and I think there is more and more men also who, who understand that, uh, 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 that we have to, to support uh, women's rights because uh, equality, we're all for equality. If you're a Democrat, if you defend human rights, you have to defend women's yes. rights and you defend equality. And this is coming more and more obvious and something very normal. And, and, uh, but I wanted to tell Alice, she comes from a, a country, a model country. The Scandinavian countries are often models for others. And, and there you see that some measures, which are also proposed by the gender equality strategies, they have worked in mm -hmm. countries. So let's do it in all the countries. We know they work. Look at, look at uh, Sweden, look at Denmark, look at Norway, which is not a member of the European Union, but, but look at their governments, look at their parliaments, look at, at, at go in the street, go on the street. If I'm in, in Sweden or Denmark in an airport, in a business lounge, I see almost as many women as men. Mm. If you are in a business lounge in some other member countries, you see maybe two or three women. Or oh, when you are in it, the streets. The, of, the of fathers the... with the kids yes, in Sweden, yes, yes. that's fantastic. You see oh, so everywhere. many young fathers with the children. In other countries, you only see the mothers with the children. Yes. So we need this mentality change, and it is possible. And, and that's, that's the way it, the strategy wants to bring us towards a more equal society. But as, you, as we just discussed, that also in the, among MEPs, there are like 12 MEPs, women from Sweden, right? Yeah. And nine men. So women are, there are more women MEPs from Sweden than, uh, than men. Yes. As opposed to Cyprus, where there are only men. Yes. Um, and, and this uh, result or this consequence, I mean, this, this is a consequence of, uh, I mean, looking at competence. Uh, uh, and, I mean, sooner or later, it can be a problem too, <laughs> that we only will have men, women, but we are not there yet. It will be maybe 50 or 100 years <laughs> before this change will come. But I think it, the most important thing is what you also said, 
that it can't be only women who are doing this uh, fight. We need men to be allies. And to be an, an ally uh, means that you are also uh, committed to make this change, that you want a world, uh, you want a, a Europe, a, an EU, a parliament that is equal. And I think that intersectionalism or an intersectional view on this is so important. It's about seeing the discrimination within the discrimination, because mm -hmm. there is also a risk that we create uh, systems that uh, is uh, good for white uh, rich women <laughs> or white middle class women. Mm -hmm. We need to understand that, I mean, uh, women as, uh, as a group are not homogeneous. We need to see the different hinders that could be in the way for, mm -hmm. for all women uh, to live free and good lives. But uh, what do you think about gender quotas in, in, uh, in top management? Uh, is that a good idea, or at least for the transitional period? I think it's a good idea for, for a period. Uh, because right now we are uh, 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 quoting in men <laughs> and have done so for a very long time. So I think, especially when it comes to, uh, I mean, the, the companies uh, and the organization that is uh, uh, owned by the state, I think it's a very good idea to, to go in front and show an example of uh, how to make a change. It's, it's, it... It's weird that only 7.5% of all CEOs of big uh, European companies are women. That, there, there you see there is something wrong. I mean, that's not normal. Eight, not and it's even, a loss. We are yeah, losing yeah, confidence. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and that's not normal. And therefore, I think quotas are a, tr a good transition to get to a more balanced field. And then sometimes... Um, the opposite the opponents of quotas, they tell me, well, that's then a, a qualified man will be replaced by an unqualified <laughs> woman. And then I have to tell these people, listen, there is enough qualified women around. <laughs> Even in Europe, there is more women coming out of universities or exactly. in, 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 with good diplomas yeah, with, than with men, high with so? high education than men. So this, this idea that through quotas, a good man will be replaced, for 100 years, there have been incompetent men also on important posts, so uh, exactly. that the question was never posed. But uh, you see, we have to educate and discuss with those people and tell them that it's important. And then it worked, as it worked, as I said, look at the Scandinavian countries, it worked. And mm. it's, it, 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 is, it, it is wonderful to see how equal then it is. And the image, it's, 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 it's nice. Uh, for example, sometimes I'm invited, I have the reaction now, when I'm invited to a panel where there's only men, I tell them, listen, sorry, I'm not coming because I don't think it's represent. We cannot discuss only men. Yeah. And the same, I don't find it's good if there is only women. We need, the, we need to be mixed and, and mm. together. But I think it's so important what you just said, that we also have the focus on competence. Because yeah. otherwise our yeah. opponents will say yeah. that, oh, you just put the, the, yeah. her there because she's black and woman. No, yeah. we'll talk about competence. Yeah. And it can be a competence to be a woman also. And it can be a competence to come from another country or have uh, another color on your skin. It can be, it's part of the, the, the competence map. Different angle, yeah. different background. Different perspective, yes, yeah, yeah. different, perspective. different uh, uh, experiences uh, that uh, add to your, your, yourself as a tool. There's also other aspect on gender equality, motherhood penalty. But women tend to uh, receive uh, smaller pensions. There's not only a wage gap, but also pension gap. 30% mm. uh, lower pensions than men mm. because they have been out of the job market uh, while they were having uh, children. That's probably not that easy to solve this, this uh, pension gap, right? No, it's not easy to solve, but with a pay transparency and with a, a, a bigger discussion about this inequality, we can also push companies, private companies, uh, and the people working in those companies and the voters to really have their eye on this and, and demanding a change. Because this needs to change, and we need to make sure that the one, the, wo the woman or the man or whoever, who takes care of the family, who are not working as many years uh, during, uh, they are not working at mm. the job, but they are working at home, mm -hmm. that they are also compensated. And this is a big uh, political task. Yeah. The problem is that 75% of the unpaid care work in families are done by women. Mm. They, it's mostly the women who take care of the grandparents or the parents it's, and the children. And here we also need a change. 
thank God there is 25% of men who do it too, but we need more, and we mm. need more balance. And I see with a lot of modern families, they have a wonderful division of labor, if I may call it like that, in their family work, and, and they participate, and it's, it's not this image anymore where daddy comes home with, a, with his... Uh, uh, um, back and, and sits on the table, the soup is there, the kids sit there, mommy, has, these times are totally over and we don't mm. want to come back there. We want to have both preparing food, both taking care of the shopping, both and, and having... And maybe several. Yeah. I mean, yeah. in Sweden now and in the Green Party in Sweden, we talk a, a lot about making politics for, we call it rainbow families, yeah. where you maybe are two fathers and two yeah. mothers yeah. and some... Uh, and we, so how, how do we create the best circumstances yeah. for the children? Uh, and we know that it is, you need a village to raise a child. Yeah. Okay. And maybe we can create small villages that cooperate between each other to, to foster the, those children with love and to be seen and w with all the needs that children have. And this is the next step for, for us to really develop, I think. It's a still a long, long way in, in front of us yes. uh, yeah. for, to achieve yeah. that. Thank you both for the debate and thank you for listening. So we see that uh, gender... Uh, gender equality, it's a long road. We are just probably in the middle of it, right? And there is still a long way to go. Thank you and bye.